Okay, we have a beam balance here. So we have a 5 newton and 4 newton hanging on the left side and a 4 newton hanging on the right side. So this 5 newton and 4 newton, they are acting downwards. So they will, they will result in in a anti-clockwise moment. And this 4 newton, because it's turning this way, it will result in a clockwise moment. Okay, so now let's calculate the total anti-clockwise moment and clockwise moment. So the total anti-clockwise moments is equal to a force times distance, 5 Newton times 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 units of length. So it will be 5 times 4. And we have 4 Newton here. So 4 times 1, 2, 2 unit of length. So total we have 20 plus 8, 28 units of anti-clockwise moments. Okay, then uh, for clockwise moment, it's equal to force time distance, 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 units of length. So that will give us 20 units of clockwise moment. So we see that um, we have a larger anti-clockwise moment than clockwise moment. So to balance to balance the, the beam we need a clockwise moment of 28 minus 20 which is 8 units. So we need 8 units of clockwise moment to balance the beam. And since we have a force of 2 Newton, so moments is equal to force times distance. If we want to create a moment of 8 unit and we have a force of 2 Newton, that means the distance that we need it will be 8 divided by 2. We need 4 units of length okay so four units of length it will be one two three four so we should hang a two newton load here at d to determine which container is the most stable we first look at the base area we see that a and d they have a larger base area compared to B and C. So we can straight away eliminate these two options. And D is, it looks uh, regular. So the center of gravity should be somewhere in the middle. And for A, because it has, it has a wider base and it has a narrow, narrow top, right? The center of gravity must be below the center point. So since A has a larger surface area and a lower center of gravity, it must be the most stable. Okay, let's draw a diagram to represent the forces. Okay, we have a fan that is in the center. And on one side, we have a pressure of 105 kilo pascal. And on the other side, we have a pressure of 103 kilo pascal. So the difference in the the difference in the pressure is going to give us a resultant force per unit area. So the difference in pressure it will be pressure 1 minus pressure 2 and this difference in pressure is going to give us a resultant force per unit area. So we have uh, 105,000 Pascal minus 103 thousand pascal is equal to resultant force divided by the area in meter square which is 4. So now we have 2000 is equal to resultant force divided by 4 and we can say that the resultant force is equal to 2000 times 4 which is 8000 Newton. So the answer should be B. Okay, this diagram shows a modified barometer and this line shows the reference line. And we have 
a gas applied that is applying a pressure on the uh, mercury trough here so let this be the pressure of the unknown gas and then we have a column of mercury of x meter that is acting downwards opposing the pressure of the gas supply so let this be pressure of the mercury and on top of it we have the atmospheric pressure let it be pressure atm so if you write out the equation it will be pressure of the unknown gas is equal to the pressure uh, acting by this column of mercury plus the atmospheric pressure and the pressure of this uh, mercury column is actually x meter of mercury and the atmospheric pressure is h meter of mercury meter hg so the answer should be x plus h meter of mercury answer a Okay, since there is no friction or air resistance acting on the trolley, the work done by the force F is converted to the gravitational potential energy of the trolley. So, um, in this case, it will be B. Work done by the force F is converted to the energy given to the trolley.